This episode of Spectre Creative is brought to you by books. Looking for something to read that doesn't have a screen and creates a glare? Choose books. Welcome back to the Spectra Creative Channel. I'm your host, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick, a longtime Masters of the Universe fan and one who's been blessed with the chance to work on Masters of the Universe professionally when I spent 10 years at Mattel on the Classics line. And the reason we're slowly scrolling up this image of so many characters is because, well, Masters of the Universe as a brand is made up of lots of different species. Granted, humans are sort of the predominant species, and they're often betrayed as heroic warriors or people who don't really know what they're doing. Either way, we see more humans than we see of anything. And part of it is because, well, they're easy to design and easy to draw because you don't have to make up, you know, what their tails or fins or all sorts of, you know, things that make characters monstrous look like. But that doesn't mean that hasn't been done in the brand, and there are tons of monster and beast and robots and all sorts of crazy characters. In fact, Masters of the Universe as a brand is probably more welcoming of designs than almost any other IP out there. I mean, there's ninjas and cowboys and harpies and fish monsters and bird ladies and lizard people and, well, pretty much anything works in Masters of the Universe. And one of the species that's more closely related to humans and doesn't take that much redesign work is the gar. And that's because the only difference between a human and a gar is pretty much their skin color and their pointy, pointy ears. Now, not every character in Masters of the Universe or in sort of pop culture that has blue skin is a gar. Blue skin does not make one a gar, but all gar have blue skin, right? That's sort of one of those SAT things. And one of the more notorious members of this species is Keldor, the character who eventually becomes Skeletor. So let's talk about their history a bit. And that's going to start with Queen Marlena. And for those of you who know your Masters of the Universe history, Queen Marlena didn't start off as a queen. She actually started off as a test pilot from planet Earth and was a member of Project Nexus that sent off astronauts to try to recreate black holes, or not recreate, but create black holes in space in order to find ways to have shortcuts. And her spaceship was called the Rainbow Flyer, although it's also called the Rainbow Explorer and the Rainbow Warrior. Its, uh, it's, <laughs> its name tends to get moved around sometimes based on the content. Things weren't as tight back in the day as they are now. But either way, this spaceship with the word rainbow in its name was what brought Marlena to Eternia, and her mission with her fellow astronauts was to go through a black hole that they created using the technology aboard. Now, the problem was this was an artificial black hole, and it was an experiment. So while it did bring her across the universe and on the Horde Empire map that was included for subscribers to Masters of the Universe Classics, every year we included a map, you can see there at the bottom left-hand corner is Earth, and at the top right-hand corner is Eternia. And between the two, there is a Einstein-Rosen bridge, which is the black hole that, or rather the path through black holes that Marlena took in order to get from Earth to Eternia, which is all the way across the galaxy or across the Horde Empire, depending, I guess, on your point of view, whether you're pro-Horde or not. Who isn't pro-Horde? Well, I guess He-Man's not. So during the course of this intergalactic voyage, there was an accident, and the black hole smacked into a planet called Garius. You can see the Garius asteroid belt on the map, which is all that was left over after the planet was accidentally destroyed by a black hole and a spaceship going through it at warp speed or light speed, whether you're a Star Wars or Star Trek fan, at really fast speed. How about that? Now, this wasn't intentional, and this was a mistake. It was a horrible mistake, and it led to the destruction of Darius and the annihilation of most of the Gar people. I mean, 
I'm not saying this was a good thing, and Marlena didn't do this on purpose, but there was a bright side that some of the Gar were able to escape as the doomed planet was destroyed in a spacecraft. And because black holes and time travel and, you know, Jules Verne and Stephen Hawking and all that, when they escaped, they got caught in a time back loop and wound up on Preternia. And, oh wait, no, sorry, not, let's get an actual map of Preternia without the uh, current event overlay, please, thank you. So they landed on Preternia and made a new home on an island that they called Anwatgar which means new home of the Gar. And because they brought a spaceship and they brought huge amounts of technology, they were able to create spaceports and monorails and all sorts of futuristic things that the planet of Eternia, or back then Preternia, didn't have. And they were sort of the sole owners of technology in a world that was otherwise stuck in a very barbarian, medieval, dark age kind of world. And, of course, this led to a lot of jealousy because the barbarians and, you know, people living in stone castles who saw these giant Gar spaceships flying around on Wat Gar and being able to see their city glistening, you know, with metal and, and humming with electricity and all of that. Well, there was jealousy. And this is what started what became a prejudice against the Gar people that lasted for centuries and generations, and it caused a lot of issues over time, including contributed to the banishment of Keldor, who is a member of the Gar race, and him having to give up his claim on the royal throne. Now, this is a whole YouTube video into itself, and you can see more in the uh, Great Wars video on this channel if you want to know more about how uh, this sort of played out and Hero, a warrior from the stars, actually came to Eternia and brought technology of his own, which was in the form of a techno-organic virus he'd been infected with. And when it was uh, passed on to the planet through a mystical pool, it wound up giving technology to the entire planet and binding with animals. And now the barbarian side had weapons of their own and could make war against Anwat Gar and Again, it's a whole story into itself, but this was the origin of the Great Wars and how the barbarian tribes of Preternia made war against the technology based Anwat Gar, or the Gar from, or who were now living on Anwat Gar, who were now arming themselves with barbarian weapons. And it was a huge clash of cultures, essentially decimating a huge amount of the planet and destroying a lot of their culture and almost all of their post offices. So you can see that video linked here if you want to know more about the Great Wars and how that influenced the entire history of Eternia and Preternia. But let's get back to the Gar themselves because there's a lot of characters in Motu that are Gar. So in current times on Eternia, Anwat Gar has been reduced to a very small island off the coast of the main continent in the Light Hemisphere. And this is a direct result of the Great Wars. And underneath the planet, you can see the Gar spaceship that they used to escape their doomed planet is now buried deep underground and sort of forgotten. It's a, you know, a long-lost spaceship that was abandoned after they crashed. Now, Anwat Gar was sort of reimagined as a Eastern culture in order to have an Asian character and an Asian influence on Masters of the Universe for the 2000X show, much like how Zodak became Zodak with a K and he went from being a white character to a black character. Well, Anwat Gar became an Asian-based culture and Cyclone, who is a Gar, became an Asian character or, you know, I, well, you know, Asia and Eternia, but, you know, a, a, a character of that ethnicity. And a lot of the culture and the buildings and the architecture was all based on this. And don't forget rings. They had rings because that was a big part of their culture and the way they had their outfits. Why is everyone wearing those rings? Gah, because nobody wears them anymore. Rings are stupid. And while stupid they may be, the rings are what let Gar warriors create their most well-known weapon, which is a huge gust of air and wind, which allows them to do things like fly limited distances and blast people with 
wind powers. And fans have made up a lot of other Gar characters that are based on Anwat Gar with these wind powers and the rings that help create their wing powers. But not all Gar live on Anwat Gar and embrace the original culture. A lot have sort of branched out and moved throughout Eternia. Some of them have embraced magic, and their species has sort of an innate talent for doing this, which is why a lot of Gar wind up being magic-wielding warriors, because it comes easier to them than it does to other humans. And probably two of the most famous Gar on the brand is Keldor and Kronos, available now in a two-pack at a Target near you, or maybe not at a Target near you. Either way, they're two of the more important characters in the brand. Keldor, of course, becomes Skeletor, the overlord of evil, after he is denied his rightful throne by his brother Randor, who was actually just trying to protect him. But again, you can see a video on that, on Skeletor's origin. And then Kronos, who is a uh, bounty hunter, tribal leader, warrior, who becomes the villain Trapjaw, ironically, at the very hands of Skeletor, because when he leads a revolt against Skeletor, Skeletor basically bashes the hell out of him and breaks his jaw and burns his skin off of his face, which is why his face is green and not blue like the rest of his body. And so both Gar evil warriors are linked in the sense that uh, Skeletor creates Trapjaw, who then, after being you know beaten to a pulp, winds up being loyal to him until he's not and wants to eventually betray him. All right, so not all blue characters in Masters of the Universe are Gar, though. Spileans, as an example, are not Gar. They are the bat creatures that live in Subternia. Faker is a robot that's made to look like a Gar. He was designed in order to trick the people of the royal palace into thinking that He-Man killed King Randor. That was why he was given blue skin, so that people would use their natural tendencies of prejudice against the blue skin Gar to blame him. Other characters that are Gar include the wizard or sorceress Shakoti in uh, the famous two-parter to the House of Shakoti from the original Filmation series, as well as Destroyer, who's one of the fighting foemen and commands the Rotan vehicle. These, these were the uh, model kit drivers. And then there's the wizard Jarvan from Filmation. Again, Gar have a natural talent and instinct for mastering magic. And, of course, there's the characters who are cursed by magic. Too Bad is made up of two different characters, Tuvar and Badra, and, well, they are fused together, but his, his blue half is, is, a, uh, is a Gar, and he was fused with another creature from Eternia in order to create Too Bad in the 2000X series. Illumina is another character that's a Gar. She is an agent of the Unnamed One who is in Preternia and does his bidding. She's responsible for attempting to kill the mighty Spectre. I tried to have her kill him, but Axel just wouldn't let me do it and had Spectre sort of have a, a way out at the very end. All right, so what does the future look like for the Gar? Well, there have been Gar, who have been heroic warriors, and who are allies with He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. But, of course, there are also Gar that are evil warriors, and Skeletor, or Keldor, being a, uh, a major one before Skeletor was uh, Skeletor. He was Keldor, and he was a Gar. So the future is kind of up for grabs. Good guys and bad guys are Gar. Your future is whatever you make it, so make it a good one, both of you. I hope you enjoyed this video and a look at one of the more important species in Masters of the Universe. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below, and please do share this video with others. It helps tell YouTube to keep sharing it, and that's what it's all about, sharing fun toy information. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.